Okay, so let's talk a little bit uh, about materials that we have. Um, obviously, we've got some oil paint here. Now, today we're going to do uh, a grease eye painting, a brown grease eye as a beginnings. Okay, and I'm going to be working with uh, Gamblin's Asphaltum. Okay, um, it's based on a really old traditional colour uh, from oil painting, uh, which I think was derived from bitumen originally. Um, you, it's not very good as a base for oil painting bitumen because it bubbles and leaks and le leaps back through the rest of the uh, painting layers. Uh, but this is uh, a modern equivalent, okay, based on uh, oxide red and Mars black and organic black, okay. Um, so we're, we're quite safe to use that. Uh, I'm going to use turpentine. Okay, genuine turpentine. Okay, uh, you can use a uh, turp substitute if you want to while you're starting to learn to paint. Uh, but as you work uh, more professionally through time, I'd always invest in good quality materials. Okay. Uh, palette is a piece of glass. Okay, this was from an old frame. Okay, that I've broken and I'm not using it anymore. It's a bit grungy. I need to give it a clean. Um, and it's got a piece of white paper underneath so I can see the colour. Obviously, that would be easier uh, if I cleaned it. Okay. Um, I'm going to use uh, bristle brushes to start off with. Okay. Um, you can use bristle for oil and you can use synthetic brushes perfectly, perfectly well. I usually use synthetic brushes. Uh, this is a natural bristle brush uh, made by Raphael. Okay. Uh, the company, not the painter, of course. Um, and uh, when you're working through the earlier layers, you want something that's, that's going to push the paint down in through the green of the canvas. So you don't want anything too soft. Okay. Um, but it does still need to be pliant so that you can work with it loosely. Um, you don't want anything soft though, so it doesn't push the paint down into the weave of the canvas. All right. Uh, as for canvas, okay, uh, it's quite a small canvas I'm working with here. Uh, it's about 16 by 22 inches, I think. Okay. Um, so it's not, not the biggest uh, piece, but we when we're doing a demo, we don't want to be working on anything massive. Okay. Um, on the back, when you open your canvas, okay, uh, your canvas comes with these, okay. Uh, it's worth popping those into the corners of the canvas. I've got two more to do here, okay. So you think about the angle that the wood is cut at, okay. So there's one at the back that's going in that way. One minute, it's tricky with one hand. Just push that in. And then the next one is going to be coming down like that, okay, in the front, and you push that in as well. I'll pop those in when you're not looking, okay? So you should have two of those in each corner. They do serve a, a really important purpose, okay? Sometimes when you're painting, your canvas goes slack, okay? Um, if that happens, you can tap those in a little bit further, and it'll push the frame of the canvas, the stretcher of the canvas. It'll push the bars outwards and tension your canvas. It should be nice and tight like a drum. Okay. This is an acrylic prime canvas. Okay. So it's it's universally primed. You can use oil. You can use acrylic on it. Um, and this is a Loxley Gold canvas. They're a nice quality canvas that I like to use. Uh, they're not as absorbent as some of the cheaper ones. Okay. Um, so you might have to work a little thinner with it to stop it getting too wet when you start working on top. Um, but thinner, can cheaper canvases tend to be more absorbent, which when you're learning is quite a good thing uh, because you can work quite quickly with them and uh, the paint dries very fast so you can work through layers quickly. 